Frederick Nietzsche is someone whose name gets dropped a lot, and today we are going to dive more into his ideas and his background. Here we have a timeline of some of the events in Nietzsche's life. Feel free to pause the video if you want to look at that closer. Nietzsche was born on October 15, 1844 in Rokin, Prussia. He was born to a Lutheran pastor, and his paternal grandfather actually wrote books that defended Protestantism, which is a sharp contrast to what Nietzsche ends up writing about. And his father did not live very long in Nietzsche's life. He was not even five years old when his father died. So he was raised by his maternal grandmother, his mother, his two aunts, and grew up with his sister, Elizabeth. Nietzsche had a good education. Oh, after his father died, his family moved to Nuremberg, Germany, and he was able to attend a private preparatory school there. And then later in 1858, he went to attend Germany's leading Protestant boarding school. When he graduated in 1864, he went on to the University of Bonn, where he studied theology and classical philology, which is the study of the structure, historical development, and relationships of language or languages. He did not have the best experience there because two of the leading professors quarreled a lot, and he sought refuge in music and wrote many compositions. He transferred from the University of Bonn to the University of Leipzig, where one of his professors, Wissel, had gone to, and he was there from 1865 to 1867. He then joined the military until he returned about a year later due to a chest injury. In 1869, Nietzsche received a professorship in Basel, Switzerland. He was only 24 at the time, and he had not completed his PhD yet, but he got this off of a recommendation from Wiesel. And while he was there, he developed a close relationship with Richard Wagner, who took him under his wing. However, Nietzsche later severed the ties in that relationship because of Wagner's chauvinistic and anti-semitic views which is interesting because a lot of people use some of Nietzsche's writings as anti-semitic. Nietzsche left Basel briefly to be a volunteer medical orderly in the Franco-German war and while he was there he contracted dysentery and diphtheria which permanently damaged his health and he tried to return to Basel, but it got so bad that he ultimately ended up leaving altogether. To give a quick summary, there is a man named Zarathustra. I drew a hat on him so that you know which one is him. And he comes down this mountain to a town called the Motley Cow. He comes to talk to the people there about this man that he's discovered called the Overman. And the Overman is very happy because he is free from all morals nationalism, religion, prejudice, and other such things. He tells them this in hopes that they will become like the overman and overthrow the moral structure of society. However, most of them are not interested, and the one that is interested is on a tightrope, and he falls and dies. However, Zarathustra is not discouraged for very long. He continues to talk to them. And eventually, some of them join him. They do go to a cave, and they enjoy a feast and songs. They embrace the idea of eternal recurrence. Eternal recurrence of the same is one of the most widely debated Nietzschean concepts. It has been interpreted different ways, and it's very elusive because Nietzsche never got to fully explain it if he ever intended to in the first place. But some have interpreted it as a cosmological concept about time or fate or anything like that, but others have thought of it as a thought experiment of would you do this again? If you had to repeat your marriage over and over again throughout eternity, would you do it? 
Much like Zarathustra, Nietzsche also sought to undermine morality, and he is very well known for his statement, God is dead, and we have killed him. This is in the parable of the bad man, which we will be reading for class, and it is also expounded upon in his work, The Gay Science. And he said this because he believed that in the society moving towards secularism and science and rationalism and reason and all those things, the Christian God was no longer believable. And without the allegiance that Christianity demands, it would crumble. But he also said that we were not ready for our moral framework to just be shaken like that and have our legs swept from under us. And if it was, it would drive people mad. The implications of Nietzsche's idea of the will to power were debated years after his death, even into the years following the Second World War. And this is because many people viewed it as a drive towards oppression and crushing other people down to obtain power for yourself. However, other people came to view it as a form of self-control and as a necessary step towards growth and equality ultimately. But it might have been marred towards the original view of it being oppressing others due to Nietzsche's sister's anti-Semitic views when she published his notebooks uh, for him and the changes that she made to it. Unfortunately, Nietzsche spent the last 10 or so years of his life in mental darkness, and he died on August 25th, 1900, possibly due to paralysis due to syphilis or a brain tumor behind the right eye.